I need to make a new intro video. What did it say? Was it prop live? Yeah, we're getting rid of the colon. Yeah. yeah. Colon's going away. No time for colons. <laughs> hey, hello everybody. Welcome to the office. You got me and Britt today. I'm going to give Britt the mouse. She can take care of the, the show notes. This is prop live. We're doing things a little bit different today. We're talking about, what are we talking about? We're going to talk about the shop move. So, uh, if you guys have been in a hole the last uh, two months, we moved everything from our shop into this new commercial space. We're currently in the office portion of it, and then through that door is the shop portion of it. Uh, we moved out of our basement and into the new space. And part of that, we decided to change up the weekly or bi-weekly podcast a little bit. Yeah, we've um, done uh, over 150 Prop Live Q&A episodes where we bring in a guest and we answer general questions from the community. And that was super handy to figure out what kinds of questions that people kept needing help with. Mm -hmm. So that led us to do the molding and casting video series. Uh, Bill did a painting and weathering series. Mm -hmm. And so now we have all of this great tutorial content. So uh, we've been able to answer a lot of those questions in video form. So we're thinking instead, for, a, for at least for a while, we're going to try out focusing on a specific topic on each of the podcast episodes we yes. do. So this one is about our shop move. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing um, live podcasts like this every other week, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Pacific uh, for the foreseeable future, if you want to tune in live. We got our prop tarts in the chat hanging out with us right here. So um, we're not taking uh, technique questions per se like we've done in the past but we will be chatting back and forth with everyone live so thank you guys so much for showing up i see a lot of familiar faces down in the chat um if you do have questions about a build something you're working on you know, reference pictures or or if you are looking for questions on uh, how something is turning out something you're working on or you want to share whatever it is you're working on the prop tart facebook page is perfect for that We'll have a link in the show notes, of course. Um, but uh, there's over 4,000 people there, 4,000 strong. Really, really wonderful group of people. Very so smart. So helpful. Yeah. 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 I'd like to also shout out to Redbird Props in the chat. That's Paige. Our uh, first hire. <laughs> and uh, also, Shop Gremlin. Ah! <laughs> the camera didn't even want to focus on her. Uh, Paige, now I'm a, now I'm a this is Paige's <laughs> second week in the in this space proper because she just moved up here from uh, Portland. Mm -hmm. So uh, last week was her first full week uh, here, and now the three of us come to work every day like normal people. Yeah, we have like a commute and stuff. Yeah, it's great. It's pretty cool. So that's what's going on um, in the notes. What is that like? Uh, that's the uh, uh, video that okay. you did. So we did, I, I made a video um, over on our main YouTube channel kind of covering the uh, the move very briefly. So if you're, um, oh, if you hit web browser, ta-da, there you go, there's that it. video. So you can head over and check that video out if you want kind of a, kind of a visual look at the move. Uh, it's kind of, it was kind of bonkers. I did some, um before and after videos showing the space full of stuff and showing it all empty mm -hmm. and it was kind of insane to think that we fit that much space into that basement yeah it's nuts uh i think you did some good like transition shots in here too um, yeah i think like just, halfway through right there yeah yeah it's nuts mm -hmm. it is weird to see that space be empty yeah uh, i mean we we moved in there five years ago right uh, over five years ago now and oh yeah this there part. you go yep, yep. Wow. That's the main place where I worked, and it's all empty now. It's so crazy. Um, so, yeah, so we're all moved. <laughs> if you would like a way more in-depth look at the move, we filmed behind-the-scenes videos uh, as vlogs every week while we were moving, and we continue that. We still do weekly vlogs, but those are exclusive to patrons, over at Punish Props, I'm sorry, patreon.com slash Punish Props. Uh, so everyone who has supported us thus far, thank you guys so much. Um, Patreon was a huge reason why we could afford to 
make the jump into a new shop space. This this place represents a commitment over the next three years to pay our lease every month, and which is a regular payment. So having that regular income from Patreon was a huge factor in helping us decide whether or not we thought we could afford it. So thank you guys for all the support over on Patreon, or if you've purchased one of our books, or if you've used our Amazon yeah. affiliate links or anything like that, it's helped us move. Patreon's been really huge. If you're watching and you want access to that extra behind the scenes stuff and everything else we're doing extra going forward, then head on over there and consider tossing us a buck. So it's patreon.com slash punished props. Also, I want to thank our Twitch subscribers who yes. have stuck with us through this shop move. We've only uh, been doing our every other week Q&A live stream. We haven't done our live from the shop right. streams. We're going to start changing that next week. So mm -hmm. we're going to try switching on and off. So like we won't do this sit down, chatty chat every week. Mm -hmm. uh, so next week we'll be in the shop working on something. I don't, I don't know what we're going to do yet, but it'll be something. Like old school style. Uh, we'll probably start at 2 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Yeah. Uh, so that way we're not like complaining about being hungry Yeah. Uh, all the time. It'll be after lunch. Yeah. <laughs> But not close to dinner. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Dapper Way Cosplay uh, is re tangentially related to how did you decide to set up your Patreon? We did it a long time ago, and originally it was designed just to help support the live stream. But it eventually kind of morphed, um, and we're due for an update as well. Um, Patreon is an ongoing campaign, so you it will evolve and change over time. Um, so we didn't really so much decide how. We just kind of did it and kept tweaking it, and it requires more tweaks over time. Um, also related to that, It's a Trap says, have you hired that editor you're looking at getting yet? Um, actually, that's a goal on Patreon. Once we hit 1000 a week on Patreon, then we can decide, uh, or then we can afford to hire an editor. That's, um, we figured that would be a really great way to, to, to um, uh, limit ourselves from committing again to another expense. <laughs> Yeah. I imagine we'll, in the future, do a whole episode of this show on uh, just employee hiring yes. and stuff. So we'll we'll, de we'll dive into that more in the future. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Okay, so we're about ready to jump in. We're already getting some great uh, interaction from the prop tarts. Um, yeah, as we go through our story, um, it's uh, feel free to, in the chat, post at Punish Props with... A question related to what we're currently right, talking right. about and it's kind of we're gonna try and go through the whole process so uh, i'm gonna start out with you know before we have the shop to when we have the shop so yes. uh, you can post questions related to that right in the chat mm -hmm. uh no need to use the contact form on our website nope. we'll just chat about it yep so to, to start with why did we decide to move out of our basement there are a lot of benefits to that basement um the rent is fairly cheap and uh it wasn't an additional bit of uh, rent for a separate space so it was affordable it was actually fairly big it's a just under a thousand square feet uh it was kind of mishmashed into a basement and the ceilings were really short but it was still a fair amount of room but it wasn't super safe nope <laughs> not safe at all <laughs> uh the ceilings were very low. That's the main problem. And that's not just a, um, a, a problem for any tall people that might be in the shop. Um, but it's also not well ventilated. Um, when we were working with spray paint and anything that was noxious, we did a good job of venting uh, out the windows. Um, but it's still not even close to as safe as having... The, this shop space that we have in here, the ceilings are like 30 feet tall. Yeah, that makes such a difference having really tall does, ceilings. Yeah. And uh, um, the uh, electrical was very suspect yeah. uh, on how it was set up. Um, the breaker would trip all the time, mm -hmm. so we could only have a heat gun or like a hot glue gun plugged in uh, but working, not but not both. And uh, that's where the hot water heater is, and it has like a pilot light, so there's always a worry there. It's like, we have an open flame in the shop. Well, yeah. that's great. Caitlin's wondering if we have a count on how many times you hit your head. Oh, geez. It's, it was more of reminders than, like, painful damage. Right. I mean, I would hit it pretty hard every we did, now and I then. did staple foam to some of the cross oh, beams. That didn't, that didn't help too much. Safety foam. Yeah. It's, it was more the uh, those can lights with the uh, clamps. Those would move around the shop where we needed light. So they weren't a constant. I, the things that stayed the same, I would stop hitting my head on. But yeah. those things would move around all the time. Those kept reminding myself that the ceiling was low. <laughs> Uh, Ringleader Luna is curious how we're alive without that ventilation. Again, we did a good job of like wearing respirators and inventing out the windows that we had, but it meant we always had to do stuff in one area that was well sealed off, 
Um, it just wasn't convenient. Mm -hmm. And when things aren't convenient, you're less likely to follow through with the safety part of it. Yeah. And in the summer, we just go outside. Yeah, we like, did a lot of work The summers outside. in Seattle are wonderful, but in the winter, that was pretty difficult. Yes. Oh, hello. Jeff's in the chat. Hi, Jeff. Jeff is working on a special project for us that uh, we need to talk about soon, Jeff. Soon. Um, uh, and then Mr. Bush has a, an interesting question. What are the top three must-haves and must-nots? Uh, when we start talking about looking for shop spaces, we'll talk about our priorities, what it was we were looking for. We'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, the other main reason why we wanted to move out of our basement was because we wanted to grow our team. And we didn't want that team to also be sharing the bathroom, the one bathroom in our house. Yeah, that's the thing. The rental, <laughs> part of the reason rental is so affordable, it's one bathroom. Yeah. So. Um, so we wanted a professional space. We wanted that work-life separation. Um, we wanted, I mean, it means that we spend nine or ten hours a day in the shop every day, including weekends. But that means when we go home, we're not working it's actually been wonderful it's been like, really great like uh, i would find myself sitting on the couch and being like oh i should be editing video because my computer is right next to the couch so i'd go do that instead yeah and now it's all done at work hey corgi creations is here hey eric yes eric no more bonk in your head when you visit <laughs> so yeah in a nutshell that's why we decided to move out of our basement yeah and we want to yeah the, the idea of growing a team it's just it's really hard to do that in a residential space yeah like yeah. maybe if it was a completely separate building, like a giant, giant RV garage that had its own like bathroom and sink and everything. But yeah. if we did that, we would just change it again in a couple of years. Like this is what we, we're doing now is an eventual thing that would have happened yeah. at yeah. some point. Yeah. Um, the cert, the thus the the great shop search began, and we started in like February. Yeah. I think? Yeah. yeah. Um, so from February to May was about our search time. So February, April, March, March, February, March, April. It took us about three months. Um, were there any tax issues or considerations running the business out of the basement? Um, not really. I mean, I could write off half of my house rent. Yeah, uh, that's something we have to we have to change over. Is uh, like like part of our rent, part of our electric and everything was all uh, business expenses. And now that's all separate. Yeah, so. but don't worry, we have a lot more business expenses now. <laughs> um, uh, Artful Tech is curious about how long the move took. We'll get to that once we talk about the move in a little bit. Yes, first we have to find a space. Yeah. So as the story goes along, um, we uh, weren't really sure how to search for uh, what we learned is an industrial space. Mm -hmm. um, we've uh, all of our places we've lived out here in Seattle have all been rentals that we found on Craigslist. Right, right. And uh, it's so easy to find uh, like residential space listings for uh, like for just a house. It's like, hey, you want to live here? And we're like, sure. And they're like, it'll be this much. And we're Credit like, check. Okay. You're good. You're yeah, in. That's it's it. It's so much yeah. easier. Oh. So we, we started the search. Um, look, We looked on Craigslist. Um, we looked on LoopNet. LoopNet. Dot com, um, which is more for looking for industrial spaces, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so if you go over to loopnet.com, you can search for different types of housing uh, that you want to lease, and there's an industrial section. So that's the one we started looking through. And on Craigslist, it's called office slash commercial, I think. So here's the, here's LoopNet. Yeah. Um, and you can look for stuff in Seattle. So you go for, um, we, were, we were leasing, so go back. Uh, ah. Buy, uh, it turns out things are very expensive in Seattle, so we definitely had to lease. Oh, yeah. So we didn't want to buy, at least not now. Plus, Industrial. we're not sure what we're going to need a couple of years from now, so we don't want to try and buy something and then have it not work out in the future. So, yeah, go to for lease, and then you can start searching by space size and uh, a certain amounts, uh, lease rate, and then uh, yeah, 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 start filtering it down. And it's really interesting to see all the different kinds of places here. So everything you're looking in downtown Seattle, oh everything there is super expensive because that's downtown Seattle. Right. So and and the, you'll see that it's listed $13 per square foot per year. Mm -hmm. So um, as with a lot of this search, what we found out is we ended up having to do a lot of math on our end to figure out what we were going to have to pay out of pocket every month. Mm -hmm. It's not obvious. <laughs> No, it's uh, so like I, I and again, like 
I'll just preface this whole section as where you live, it, this is totally different compared to what we went through for what things cost and how they're broken down to, especially if you're in a different country. So in the US, in Washington state, if you're renting residential, everything's usually included except for like utilities. Right. So like the, the property tax is um, covered by the landlord. In industrial spaces, that is usually not the case in Washington state. It's all extra and they don't list that usually. Mm -hmm. So you get your hopes up that something's affordable yeah. and then all this stuff gets added on later and they call it, uh, around us they call it triple net. Uh, so it's oh, taxes, uh, not just utilities, but like, like ground management stuff and like all these insurances and everything are all added on later. I like that uh, Nerdy Views says, real estate has become super expensive in Seattle. And he lives in New York City, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that says a lot. Um, hey, Oku Props is here. Hey, buddy. Good to see you, Chad. Um, so what we found that we had to do was look for places that were, that had all the physical characteristics that we liked, the square footage we wanted, the, like, we wanted a, a big door in the back. We wanted uh, two bathrooms if we could um, that had all of our wants, right? We had, we had a list of wants and needs, actually. Mm -hmm. The things that the shop needs to have, the things that would be nice to have. Um, I think for any, if you're renting a, a, an apartment or if you're moving into a new space, if you're going to be committing to a lease or anything like that, come up with a list of wants and needs and be really strict about that because sometimes you'll say, oh, I really need two bathrooms but you could get away with just one it's not as important as some of the more safety uh minded features yeah we'll yeah. say that that list changed for us as we started yes. uh, touring spaces yeah because we have in your head is kind of different until you see it in person like we weren't even sure what size we needed right like because it's really hard to get a sense of size when you're in a low low ceiling basement yeah. our, our uh, storage couldn't be built up so we had a very hard, literal hard, hard ceiling. Yeah. Uh, the other huge factor for us, initially, we started looking for bigger shop spaces that we were planning on sharing with another company. Um, so our friends over at Level 52 Studios, they're local. They live kind of that way. Uh, it, so we were looking for like 5,000 square foot places. Uh, so, for example, here's one that we went and looked at. This is in Kent. Boop, there we go. So this is like the thing you would find on LoopNet, right? Yep. So yeah. this is um, actually, can you click over here for a second? I want to get the term right. Yeah. Um, it's a commercial real estate firm. So right. these are like when you're driving Kidder by. Kidder Matthews is. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, when you're driving by an industrial space, there'll be a sign out front that says for rent and it'll have like a name. And that's usually, these guys just handle it all for the, the property managers. Yeah. So the, if you're lucky, they'll have a blueprint, <laughs> yeah. kind of like an overview of what the shop space looks like. That's not always a guarantee. Sometimes they include pictures of the inside of the space, but we found that's actually really uncommon in our area. They usually don't bother. Yeah, to do which it. I thought was weird. They don't take photos. Like the photos look like they were taken from the road. Like yeah. they didn't even bother to go into the they'll, parking they'll lot. They'll be uh, if there are photos, they look like they're from Street View, Google yeah. Street View. Which also seems weird because this place that I'm about to show you was going to be like six grand a month. Yeah, like but, a lot. And that's something to consider. Is like this is a um, if you go back to the first page, you'll see it has a square footage listing. So this was almost uh, five thousand square feet, uh, and to them, this is. For industrial, it is tiny. Yeah. And this is a super small space for them because they're used to spaces that are like 20,000 square yeah. feet. So I think that's why they don't put as much effort into these listings because yeah. for them, they're like, oh, it's, if it stays vacant for a while, you know, whatever. Right. It's, small it's potatoes. So, them. They want to yeah. lease spaces that are 20,000 square feet. Well, I mean, if we look at this map of this place, look above here. Like this, yeah. uh, my mouse isn't showing up, but the place just above it is a huge huge facility and that's like one business yeah yeah yeah. versus the tiny blue square that we were looking to rent yeah and and for us walking into an almost five thousand square foot space that was huge oh yeah we realized we're like oh we would have to split this with another company yeah. because it's too big but that was that was a plan yeah. which did change over time but let me let me give you an example though uh, if you're looking to rent obviously anything but especially a commercial space you gotta go see it you, you're not going to get a, a good sense of it unless you go check it out. Uh, and we ended up seeing almost 10 different places when, yeah. we, when we went. Uh, uh, a couple of the spaces we got um, 
listings from Craigslist, um, those ones were the most, uh, I don't want to say sketchy, it's more like um, the, the property manager d didn't want to go through one of these uh, other companies and so they're listing it themselves. So they, uh, they're they a little more like bohemian yeah. and like, like we have this old building in our backyard and it's on uh, industrial zoning, like you want to rent it from us? Mm -hmm. And I look at it and they're like, oh, it doesn't have a restroom. Yeah. The last guy's just used a porta potty and I was like, wait a minute. But what I did find on Craigslist, um, it didn't work for our needs, but a lot of people were posting shared workspaces for like wood shops. So someone would be like, hey, I have this giant wood shop in this industrial space. You can rent a table. So if you're looking for not necessarily a whole space for yourself, but you just want a place to work out of your house, that would totally be a great idea. Yeah. And so those are all on Craigslist. Those weren't listed right, on, right, on right. LoopNet at all. Uh, Mr. Bush is curious how, if, how we confirmed that the space would have the power needs that we, we have. So we don't, ha like, we don't run any industrial equipment. We don't have a lot of power needs. Uh, but this place has a transformer in the back that'll do 480 volts, uh, which is way more than we need. Yeah. And so we're like, yeah, that's fine. If you we'll if you are the kind of space that needs like 240, like we don't even need that with any no, of our tools no, right now. Not but, yet. But if you do need that, that's something you would ask them right away. Right, right, to right. Like things that are non-negotiable yeah. that you need your tools to work And that's with. something you could confirm over email before you've gone yeah. to see the space. Yeah. And, that, and that should be on your list of wants and needs. Mm -hmm. If you need 240 volt power in that space, then, then make that a need. Like if you have equipment that runs on that, then you need that from the space. So uh, that should be in your questions if you're emailing these places so that you can eliminate them right away. You don't have to go travel out there and see it and find out they don't have enough power for your needs. Mm -hmm. Um, so this place here, we went and looked at it with our buddies at Level 52. We liked it a lot. Yeah, it was very nice. Um, something else to consider, and this is also just a Washington State thing, is that this place has an office. Yes, and several. The, yeah. Another hidden fee that they don't really talk about is you pay for the entire, what they call shell, yep. of the entire space. So the whole, whole square footage. And then if there's an office, that is extra. On top so of it, So you're paying yeah. uh, almost like double for having an office. Yeah. Because it's, it's got the fancy HVAC, it's got the cool office walls, and all this extra stuff. So they count that as you have to pay extra, as instead of yeah. an empty warehouse storage. Shell. And that's why this is split up square footage with 1,300 mm -hmm. square feet of office. Yeah. So the whatever price is listed might be different whether or not they decided to factor that in before or after mm -hmm. which is, seems to be depending on their whim yeah and whoever wrote the listing um this place we liked a lot it had tons of space um it had a huge warehouse it had two doors one was a below grade uh uh dock mm -hmm. which i don't need but that was awesome yeah, so there is a, but, that's something else to consider, too, is uh, there's a loading docks that are a grade level, yep. and then there's ones that are the, the taller loading docks that cars can back into, mm -hmm. and you don't have to lower things down. A lot of times, uh, that's a lot of extra work, depending on your business, so you'll want to make sure you get the right kind of loading dock. Yeah. For us, we're just like, a big door? Sure, that's yeah, better that's than fine. what we had. Um, and then, uh, uh, but, but we didn't get this space. So this space was really, really cool. It was gigantic. We didn't get it. The, the reason why is it was expensive, but we were going to have two people, two companies splitting it. The problem was that the leasing company would prefer not to have two companies on the lease, just one. So uh, we would have been the primary on the lease and level 52 would have subleased it from us yeah so subleasing uh for what i yeah. i'm going to forget everything i learned from this whole shop move but with uh subleasing you'll see listings that specify that that you're going to be leasing from someone who still has yep. the lease so for us we would be on the main lease and then mm -hmm. like level 52 would sublease it from us uh which i mean you can find listings that, that i mean the nice thing about being a subleaser is the responsibility is not really on you, yeah. uh, but it's it's more of a risk if you're the person who's the main lease yep. person. So it would have been a bigger risk for punished props. Right. We were willing to try it out. We're like, sure. Yeah. Although in hindsight, that would have been a. a that was. It would have been risky. Pretty yeah. big risk. Um, but also, they were like, "Hey, can you guys afford to cover the entire rent if you had to?" And again, that would have been like six grand a month, and the answer was no. <laughs> no, we couldn't. We weren't planning on having to cover it, but the leasing company didn't want to take a risk mm -hmm. on us. And something we noticed from touring so many shop spaces is each 
building manager was very different. Yeah, yeah. They would ask different things, be, have different concerns. They've been burned in the past in very specific ways. So like uh, the next stage would be to get an offer uh, for the space. And we got through a couple offers where they would give us information, be like, hey, it would be this much for all these things. And then we would give them a counter offer to be like, yeah. hey, we need these things instead. We, need, would... we need to cost less. They would also ask us for a list of our assets, right? Um, and our a, a lot of financial stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so for places that I would consider a more legitimate, bigger company, uh, leasing company, they're going to want a lot of. They basically have to like underwrite yeah. the risk they're taking on us because if we default on our lease, they're out however much they would have made. Basically, when you sign a lease, so if it, let's say it's a, let's say it's a three year lease for $5 million a, a month, <laughs> then, uh, or let's say $1,000 a month, because it's easier math. Yeah, but 5 million is scary. So let's, <laughs> let's, let's say it's 12,000 a year for three years. So $36,000 is what, when you sign that lease. You're gonna give that to you them. You owe them that yeah. over the next three years. Um, they have to decide how much they're willing to, yeah. to risk on us. And yeah. now if we have really super strong financials, they'll be like, oh, clearly these guys can afford it. Yeah. Um, for in this case, we couldn't. Six grand a month would have been way too much. We also don't have an industrial renting history. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. imagine that helps. Uh, just Which is what that. we're getting with this space. Yes, yeah, as yeah. long as we're good. Yeah. And that same thing happens with residential. It's like if you rent a couple places and you're an awesome tenant, yeah. when you uh, give your information to the next place, it's usually a shoe in because they're like, oh, these oh, people yeah. pay rent on time. We've already proven. Which is apparently rare. Yeah. Like, that's what I don't get. It's like, well, we are agreeing to pay this, so we're going to do it. And they're like, last guy didn't do that. He uh, declared bankruptcy and then we didn't get any money. And I'm yeah. like, that's horrible. <laughs> like, Which actually, one of the spaces we looked at, another one that we really liked, it was a similar situation to this the one we were just talking about it was a bigger space we were gonna have two people in there the tenant that was in there at the time that we were looking at it had uh was was ending their lease early yeah. they were downsizing they had run through some bad luck and they were downsizing and they were leaving their lease early so that the the landlord was super picky about who they got to fill that space because they didn't want to have to go through that rigmarole again uh, we looked at a bunch of spaces, almost 10, I think. Um, a lot of them were kind of these cookie cutter industrial uh, parks, uh, like the one we ended up in. But some of them were a little more uh, exciting. Yeah, well, we looked at one of the first places we looked at was a freestanding uh, building that used to be used for automotive stuff. So it was like a top floor that was like retail level street. And then like there was a basement on the back that like mm -hmm. would just slope down. And that's where they would do their automotive stuff. And at first we're like, this is what we want, like freestanding, like no, no neighbors, maybe a fence around it. But those ones seem to be, at least the ones we looked at that were affordable, were really sketchy. Like, a little bit, yeah. Like water in the walls. Um, Artful Techie says, are you sharing the cost of the new space? No. After, after getting turned down a couple of times, we decided to split um, or, or not look for a space with level 52. So this place is about half the size uh, but it's just us. Yes. Uh, and level 52 is looking for a space, uh, hopefully somewhere nearby, which would be great. But we just, our, our list of wants and needs shifted. Yeah. And, and that, having having a space for both of us became a good, nice to have if we could do it, but it wasn't a want. Yeah. I didn't realize I wanted to be in a cookie cutter industrial space until we went on this journey. Yeah. And the weirdest space we looked at was listed on Craigslist. No pictures, hardly any information. So I had to contact them. And they were like, oh, what do you guys do? And I'm like, oh, we do props and costumes, YouTube channel, whatever. And she's like, this space would be perfect for you. Previous person was, did pottery, and it sounds like it has everything you guys need. And, she, and she's like, you have to come see it. It's too hard to explain. And I was like, all right. And the blueprint that was posted on Craigslist was hand-drawn. That should have been uh, just a, a red flag there. But also, this was fairly early in the search, and we were kind of having fun looking at yeah. that time. We're like... It was like a, an adventure for us to go out with our friends and check out a space. Um, so we went, and that thing was a death trap. Like, and at the time it was flooding when we were touring it, <laughs> so that that was something. Um, but it was a it was like a very old building that had fallen into another building, so they're like leaning into each yeah, other. Yeah, they became one. Yeah, and they're the, the, all the floors were uneven, and uh, the bottom was flooding, and. Uh, 
they were the woman was just trying to convince us it would work. Yeah, there she was, was selling it pretty hard. A lot of the rooms didn't have electricity. There was no heat. No, no heat at all. <laughs> of course not. There was one bathroom, and it was like sketchy is a good way to describe it. It was bad. Uh, so the basement was almost certainly haunted. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one room. Okay, so there was a uh, there was a freezer, a giant freezer, and there were a couple of problems with this freezer. One. Uh, it was supported in the basement by a creepy room with a bunch of pillars. It looked strong, but it looked creepy. Like It looked like something from a movie set. Yeah. Uh, but also, someone else was already renting just the freezer. And he would keep his food there for his restaurant. And then every morning, he'd show up and took, take what he needed to the restaurant. Um, but that meant we'd be sharing the space with some dude we didn't know who had access to the building, which was not very appealing. And the us. landlord was like, oh, don't worry, he's cool. Yeah, the oh, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, Jeff, he's fine, he's, he's fine. I'm like, I don't I'm like, what is he, I mean, there could have been bodies in that freezer, <laughs> yeah. we don't know. Probably was, so, anyway. But yeah, so, like, after looking at those spaces, um, we found that what we really needed was maybe a tiny office, even that, like, not completely necessary, but we really just needed a shell mm -hmm. to build what we want. Yep. Like, uh, so taller ceiling uh, and these industrial park places looked actually perfect for us. The challenge was now that we were looking for smaller spaces, it was really hard to find listings that were like 2,500 square feet. Because again, for these giant uh, facilities, that's like nothing. Mm -hmm. So they would rather rent 20,000 square foot people to one person instead right. of this little one. In fact, this this place and the spot next to it were both available and they wanted to fill both of them at the same time if they could because mm -hmm. that would be closer to like five or 6,000 yeah, square feet like between that. the two of them. Um, but we were like, we just we just want the, the smaller portion of it. And they were cool with that. Um, but we're under no illusions. Like, this is small potatoes for, for especially... Compared to the myriad of other spaces in, in just this complex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like this one's, I think, 2,300 square feet, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, so I think what, yeah. what and, you would... Yeah, some of the other spots around here are like ten or 20,000. They're massive. Yes. You know? uh, so some of these other um, uh, companies that I was talking to that um, figure out uh, what's for lease, like those little signs you see out in front of the industrial spaces, those companies. I talked to a couple of them, and one of them straight up asked, well, what do you need? I'll find a spot for you. So I was talking with them for a while. We went with a different company that actually showed this as a listing, but mm -hmm. that might be um, better advice once you figure out that you do want in a big industrial space is just go directly to the middleman company. Tell yeah. them your needs, and they'll try and find a space for you. So this we went with Kidder Matthews, yeah. which is a common company. Uh, commonly seen company around here mm. um you'll also find though that a lot of times listings for a, one space will pop up in several different locations yeah too. there's um there's yeah. a couple other websites that are similar to loopnet and you'll see identical postings on different ones but yep. I, was, I stuck with loopnet because that was the one that had the best format that was easier for me to read but mm -hmm. there are other ones out there uh so uh, so eventually we found this spot once we decided to just go out on our own we found this spot uh the space was right the price was right um, it, it has this office, which is unnecessary, but fantastic. Uh, we, we went and checked it out. We looked around. We were like, it's awesome. We're in. And they were like, fill out this tenant application yeah. form. We filled it out. And then they were like, here's a lease to yeah. sign. It was it, very, very straightforward it was, and simple. Yeah, there was one small step in between that that we had refined um, that Bill really worked on. The first place we looked at that seemed like it was going to happen, this bigger space, uh, we were kind of jumbled with presenting our financials and our business plan and everything. And by this time, oh, yeah, like, we had, had a package to see yeah, yeah. them. Everything like, they needed to know. Yeah, just like, hey, this is what Punish Props does. And this place didn't even ask for it. Yeah. They were yeah. like, yeah, you guys are cool. <laughs> yeah. But like, uh, like some of the spaces just didn't understand. Like, how do you make a living? YouTube? What? And yeah. it's like, oh, no. Like, um, Mr. Bush in the chat says, uh, it's interesting. He says, when you lock in an industrial space, is there a bidding war? like in residential. Now, funny enough, I've never done any sort of bidding for a residential rental, but we have for industrial. Uh, so I guess it depends on where you live and what, what's expected. Um, for this place, we didn't do any bidding. We no, were like, that's I don't, fine. Yeah, I don't think anyone was really looking at yeah. it. The listing was only up for a brief time. They took it down for some reason. Yeah. And uh, 
Again, I think they were waiting for more spaces to open up in this complex to maybe bundle it. Maybe, But yeah. instead, we just swooped in and we're like, hey, is that available? Well, like it, <laughs> yeah. In fact, they're still moving stuff out of the place next yeah. door. Yeah, and but, the, the, yeah, and our neighbors will probably all change eventually. So, what's interesting, though, is there you'll put in an offer based on the listing and say, okay... I know you listed it this much, and this is what's included, but this is what we'd like to pay, and this is what we would like to have included. Uh, a lot of times they won't budge on the price, but you can you can negotiate to get some benefits. Like we got um, the first month here was free. That seemed to be a pretty standard yeah. request to be like, hey, this is I mean, it's going to take me a month to move in, so I shouldn't have to pay. Yeah. The, uh, uh, for a month, but you do have to pay all the extra stuff like the taxes and yeah. everything. So there's still, but it's not the actual. But not the base rent. Yeah. Um, but one place was going to give us um, money that we could put towards upgrades to the space, like a substantial amount of money. Mm -hmm. um, and when we were negotiating, um, that was a huge bonus. We were like, ooh, so it may cost more, but they were going to give us like $25,000 yeah. towards upgrades. Yeah, for them, they want to awesome. bring someone in, have them uh, specialize the space like to their needs. Or yeah. Or no. bring in a tenant. Yeah, bring yeah. in a tenant, uh, customize the space to their needs, and then they'll never want to leave. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like they, they want to keep someone for, like, 10 years, 20 yeah, years. Yeah. Like, that would be so much easier than having someone move out every three years. So um, uh, what happened with that space in particular, they weren't in love with our financials, and they also put a stipulation that we would get access to that money after a year. Which was a bummer because we would have used that money in the fruit. We would have wanted yeah. to make those upgrades yeah, right away. I needed, so I needed it right when I moved in. It made it a lot less appealing to us. So we, we ended up bailing yeah. on that. Yeah, each one was different. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, we did one spa space specifically called out when we did a counter offer. They were like the offer was, hey, you would pay this much a month. And we were like, how about this? How about much? a little less? And they responded with uh, the other people. Yeah, at uh, Seattle, someone at, will pay for yeah. it. Yeah, so it did seem like there was almost a bidding war going on in that yeah, location. Yeah. So, so, but if you do look for a space, um, you can negotiate on the price, but you can negotiate on a lot of other stuff too, mm -hmm. which is really. And this is all depending on where you are. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. As well. So, uh, so we found this space and we liked it, and we came to an agreement fairly quickly, which was nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say, once we got the lease, I sent it to my uh, younger brother, uh, not my twin brother. I have a younger brother who used to negotiate leases for large um, commercial spaces. So On the he, other side. So, yeah, so, so he knows what to look for. So I had someone who knew what he was talking about look over the lease, make sure there wasn't anything in there. Remember, when you sign that thing, you're committing to the term, which for this place is uh, three years, which is a pretty short-term lease for a place like this. It seems to be standard, too. It's either three, five, or ten. Ten or more. Ooh, another thing is if you commit to a longer lease – that gives you a lot of leeway in negotiations. Yeah, if they can lock yeah. you in for longer, you'll tend to get more stuff out of it. But five years is a, yeah. a pretty big commitment. Like, punished props changes uh, needs yearly. Yeah. So three years from now, we might need a bigger space. We're we, we might pretty need much counting space. on it in three yeah. years, probably moving. But we'll see. So a three-year lease worked for us. But they also made, there wasn't any sort of negotiation. They were like, three years cool we're all cool great sign the paperwork you're in we did have to before um right about when we were signing the lease we had to get some fancy insurance stuff yeah and it's, oh, it's yeah. it's the kind of thing it was great they let us know what we needed they even said like a sample document of all the kinds of industrial insurance you need uh that covers everything so yep. covers like since we have adjoining walls with companies like if the whole thing burns down it's like we're covered they're yep. covered we have a bunch of uh like uh, uh safety insurance stuff or just business insurance. Yeah, business insurance, yeah. Um, something else to remember, too, with a space like this is what you're on the hook for in case something has to be fixed. Basically, anything inside these walls, we have to pay for to fix. Anything outside, the landlord pays to have fixed. Yeah, and it's uh, different places um, have that already included in the uh, payments. So, like, the outside stuff, the reason we don't have to fix that is it's already included in that bundled extra money that we pay for. So, we're technically paying for it. Right, right, It's right, just right. in installments. Yeah, And yeah. sometimes... And it's a, it's a pool. All the places around here pay... Uh, everyone who's renting in this complex yes. is paying towards yeah. that. Yeah. But, like, if the toilet breaks, that's on us. Um, but um, there are some places that go more toward what they call a gross uh, uh, payment which is more including all of that. Mm -hmm. It's way higher, but then if your toilet breaks, it's already you're already paying for right, right, right. that. 
There aren't too many places in Seattle that do that. Um, Mitsula says, so I need to schedule another Seattle trip in three years? Sure. <laughs> and thank you for helping us move, by the way. Speaking Mitsula was in town when we were moving, and he helped us out. Speaking of moving, that's the next thing we're going to talk about. Yeah, real quick, uh, Odd Man Out wants to know if Budokat has been able to explore the empty basement. He has not. He's never been in the basement. You have to go outside to get into the basement, and he doesn't go outside. No, so. he's never been in the shop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rob says, "If the to- Rob, my my twin brother's in the chat. If the toilet breaks, it's probably on Bill. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, quick story about Budicat. Um, our our shop before our basement shop, we were in a townhouse, and Bill's shop was in the bottom one car. It was like a two car garage, mm-hmm. uh, uh, basement setup of the townhouse. And the very first video that Bill was going to do on the YouTube channel, uh, where he's talking to the camera, is the one called uh, Cat, Boss. Cat Boss. So if you go back and watch that, Buddha Cat's in that. For Maybe the... Paige can find the link to Cat Boss. Oh, Post it in the chat. Thanks, it's, Paige. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel and look up uh, Change the Filter to Oldest first, it'll be there. Um, but so for that video, the original concept was Bill had a green screen downstairs. He was so proud of. It. He's like, ah, green screen. He's like. Okay, we're gonna have a cat talking to me, so let's bring Buddha Cat downstairs yeah. and set him up in the chair. And at first, I think we're gonna do Willow because she's more talky, chatty. Yep. So our big fluffy cat is more chatty. She's also terrified of everything. So I think we tried to bring both of them down there at one point. They did not like. No. They were like the howling, sad. I was like, we can't put this on video. It seems no. like we're like, torturing our pets. No. So we instead filmed it upstairs where Buddha Cat's in one of the chairs and. I thought that worked out great. He was also, we just kept throwing catnip on him. So that's why he's like licking his face in that video. <laughs> All right. So we moved. We got our space. We signed the paperwork. Um, got the keys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we moved. The getting the keys was super weird. Because we showed up. We met the uh, two of the property managers. Super nice. Wonderful people. And they just handed the keys and started walking away. And we're like, do, so... do we... Do we get to keep these? <laughs> so we can move our stuff in, and they're like, uh, yeah, 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 sure, yeah, it's your, it's your space now, and we're like, so what? we went home and like got a box and like put it in the middle of the floor, and we we're like, ta da, <laughs> the great shop migration has begun. The nice thing about moving into a bigger space is we, uh, we can just put stuff anywhere while we're moving in. Um, <laughs> so I guess we can start talking about that now. The. Uh, uh, I don't remember, like, did we just start moving those Tupperware containers? Were those the first things to go, the little little ones? Probably. Yeah. Basically, though, we have a golf. and So for the first few days, we would come to the shop to just do some maintenance and stuff and, like, get the bathroom. Like, there was no toilet paper. So every time we took a trip down here, we just stuff our car with things mm-hmm. uh, for about a week before we had, like, the big move. Yeah, so all the big tools and everything were remaining behind, all the, the shelving and tables. And we were just taking – it was as you and Everett did most of that. Drive down with two people, yep. golf filled with, filled with stuff. And since the shop was so big, we were just piling it on one side. It didn't have to be stored mm-hmm. away anywhere. Yeah, that was the best part yeah. is that we could just cram stuff in a corner. There was still plenty of room, and then we will just – We'll just move it all later. And yeah. uh, with one of the shop spaces that we visited, we actually inherited a bunch of their office furniture. Mm-hmm. So that was all in a like, in a like that. Yeah, like all of this, all the stuff you see in the office. Well, we, the, we purchased it. Yeah, okay. we pur- we purchased it. Uh, the uh, they had some shop tables because uh, the, they were downsizing when they yeah. were moving out. It was uh, so uh, we had all of that in a storage space, and mm-hmm. we had been there for like two months. So you had to rent a truck to get all of that to our new shop uh right yeah me i i hired the 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 uh, most muscly friends i know everett and my buddy dave the three of us rented a you know penske truck or whatever rented a truck drove down there pulled everything out of the storage unit and then dropped it off here and these things this is like industrial furniture it's, it's so crazy heavy, heavy. It's, it's but it's stupid really heavy. good um so we took one day to do that, and then we had, like, the big shop move day, and it was really amazing. We did, I didn't, like, ask for help, but uh, many of our friends just kind of showed up. <laughs> uh, our friends at Level 52 donated their truck. Yeah, they have a really big van. That was so helpful. Yep. All, the, all the big tools fit in the van. We thought we were going to eventually do uh, hire a moving service to, right. to handle the big tools. We, we just lucked out with our friends. Yeah, so we got the bulk of everything moved in just two days. Mm-hmm. Um, of all the big stuff, so like the uh, the bandsaw is pretty heavy. The the uh, drill press, the drill press is really heavy. That um, one bent the the cart 
the yeah. little wheelie cart. My Harbor Freight uh, hand truck. Yeah. Um, but we got most of that done in just a couple of days. I mean, there's we've been moving stuff pretty consistently for like a month and a half. Mm-hmm. But it's just like every day we come into work, we bring some more stuff in the car. Mm-hmm. But those two days in that one weekend, we really slammed out a bunch of stuff. So yeah. thank you all the friends who helped. Paige drove into town for that before she'd moved up. Mm-hmm. Um, it was pretty fantastic. I thought I saw a question... And he's, uh, Mr. Bush says, were there any special considerations moving your goods to the shop? Just so, anything that was delicate. The laser cutter I moved in the car. 3D printers. 3D printers we mo- moved in the car. Um, there were a couple of trips that we took that didn't have a lot of stuff in them. Just stuff that we were worried about breaking. Some of the props we have. Uh, in fact, a lot of the props that are hung up um, didn't move until way at the end. Yeah, if you're, uh, if you're on our Patreon, uh, in some of the vlogs, we show how we move the props in the uh yeah yeah in the car but it was all just laid flat and all our costumes are still at the house too yeah that's another thing um our rental house is a two bedroom so the extra bedroom has been costume storage and our sewing room Mm -hmm. so if any of our videos you see where there's a few of them where we do sewing that's in the spare bedroom and there was just bins of costumes in the closet and now that um, our basement shop is emptied out, those have moved down there. Yes. <laughs> so they're not even here yet. Uh, something a lot of people have asked us about is what we plan on doing with the basement. Uh, it's pretty much empty right now. We're storing stuff down there for now. We have some uh, extra uh, books uh, that have been uh, printed. Yeah, from our, the printing our inventory. Company. Yeah, that's still there. Uh, and the mm-hmm. costumes, because otherwise those costume bins would just be here instead of there. So we're like, ah, why move them? So with Sweepy, uh, once we got the mannequin display figured out, we brought that costume. So slowly yeah. they'll all make their way here. But for now, um, we're a lot less concerned with what we're doing with the old space and more concerned with what we're doing mm-hmm. here. Yeah, and that's a rental, too, so yeah. we'll, we might end up moving out of that one. So. Yeah, what we're, what we're paying in rent for that space is kind of bonkers whether it has a basement or not, so I'm not concerned about getting value. Mm-hmm. We've got five years of value out of that basement already, mm-hmm. um, so for now it's just laundry and some storage, but that's about it. Maybe a BattleBots arena. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would we have done differently? Hmm. Um, this was interesting. Uh, it was it was starting to get very frustrating when we were in the shop hunt, and we kept getting running into walls. Um, but every time we did that, we learned a little bit more about the process, um, which now that we have a space, uh, isn't useful. But yeah, the first <laughs> the first place we talked to, the guy was like. Yeah, usually people know what they're doing with the like. You're you're supposed to ask me questions, not me ask you questions. And I was like, I was literally like, I have no questions. I, well, but also I was like, I've never done this before. Right, right. Like, you don't know what you have to ask. Yeah, or what you should ask. Yeah. So it took uh, visiting a couple spaces and trying to put in offers for a while to really get a feel for the whole process. And every space was still different. Like place we ended up with eventually probably would have worked as the first place we visited uh even though we weren't sure what questions to ask because these guys are just super chill like they're like like sure you know here's right. a lease whereas some of the other spaces we we're looking at they were like like how do you make money and they just didn't get it like yeah it was, one company like ruffled us the wrong way with that like they just, they just had a lot of questions about our business model yeah and at a certain point you want to be like none of your business yeah and they're like fine we won't rent you a space you know so I guess um, we part ways. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was that was tough, but I don't regret doing it. Um, and your needs and wants will change after you check out some spaces. Right. And right. there are so we've definitely made some compromises with our current space, but I'm glad we went with the space we yeah. did. Like we currently don't have an actual shop sink. Right. Uh, we we have two sinks. Yeah, we have two sinks. But they're like bathroom sinks. Yeah, we have a yeah. we have a plan that we can do like like a half shop sink that connects to the bathroom sink or we might invest like a year from now in actually adding a shop yeah sink. we'd and, have to negotiate that with our landlord yeah. figure out we'd have to get a contractor to do it we'd have to pay for it mm-hmm. but it might be worth it for us yeah um and then uh we're still working on getting uh, uh the spray booth and the laser cutter ventilated out some of the spaces we looked at already had a giant like pipe in the ceiling yeah. where there used to be a fan where they used to vent something out of it we don't so, have like, that here that this one did not have that so we still have to figure that out right but um, for the work that we do, if if we end up not being able to use the laser cutter here, that's not 
like a workshop for us? Yeah, uh, we're in a unique situation where since we're producing tutorial content, Unless our channel is a laser cutting channel. Yeah, we're not laser cutting stuff every day. Yeah, we're not a production company cranking out yeah. stuff. Like even our 3D printers, we run like once a week. Uh, so. Yeah, if we had to like run the laser at home, that'd be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so yeah, the, that's the main thing that I, I kind of took away from this experience was that list of wants and needs and being uh, flexible about it and, and learning over time once you're halfway through the process what, mm -hmm. what your wants and needs really are. Um, because there were a lot of things that I thought were needs that yeah. I was fi after after like two months of searching, I'm like, eh, I don't need it that bad. <laughs> and, and it gets bumped down to want. It's probably a lot of the same emotional states as if you're buying a house, like a residential house. We haven't done that personally, but what I've heard from our friends is like it's this emotional roller coaster of getting your heart set on something and then going and seeing it and being like, oh, but it's actually kind of crummy but they're like but i but i just need it and then someone else gets in you're sad and so it's yeah. you just have to learn to be okay with that of not, not necessarily getting the first thing you look at yeah habit here workshop uh is uh, uh surprised that we only maybe run a 3d printer once a week <laughs> just remember that if i'm working on a, like my current project was 3d printed i'm not going to tell you what it is but i can tell you it was 3d printed and I've done all the 3D printing, and now I'm molding it. It's it's multiple pieces, so I'll be spending the next week or two molding. Mm -hmm. um, if I have something to 3D print, I'll 3D print it, but I don't. So for now, I'm making molds. Mm -hmm. um, we're not running a production company. We're not producing a lot of uh, physical goods. We're producing videos. Yeah, so, it's like a digital yeah. production company. So like the 3D printers, the laser cutter, the vinyl cutter, these are all really great, and we use them, just we don't necessarily use them every single day. Yeah, yeah, so, but I mean, uh, again, like, I'm very happy with the shop space. It is not worn off. I still, every day I come into work, I'm like, this is the best. Yeah. This is the best thing ever. And I, and now it's been long enough where I think, like, I can't believe we used to work in that basement. Mm -hmm. Like, it was it was definitely a good transition space, but we probably should have been doing this, like, a year or two ago. Yeah. Like this, this search. That's weird going, I went down, I did laundry yesterday, I went down in the basement, and um it doesn't smell like the shop anymore it's been a month or so since we moved everything and it smells like an old basement again <laughs> like that i remember growing up our i don't think my first house had a basement but the neighbor next door had a basement and the, the town where i grew up was a revolutionary war era town so very old i have no idea how old that house was but the old basement smell mm -hmm. is universal and that's what our basement at home smells like yeah. again. I think it always smelled like that, but you were just used to it. No, when all the stuff was there, uh, all the shop stuff was there, it smelled like shop stuff. Yeah. How many days has it been glitter-free? Zero. Zero. Always. The glitter came with us. Yeah. So. And we left a lot behind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, if anyone has any more questions about the move, go ahead and post it in the chat there, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll answer you. Yeah. Mr. Boosh says, if you had to pick one thing, what was the final straw that made you go... That's it. New shop o'clock. Search starts tomorrow. Well, we hired Paige. Hi. And uh, here's Paige. And uh, for a long time, uh, I mean, we hired you back in like October, uh, but for months um, we were just working remotely. And then we started talking about the, the possibility of her moving up here to work. Um, and we just have, Brittany and I have had this conversation going on for the last year or two. Not necessarily about whether or not we were going to move, but kind of just like when. Yeah, um, we want, uh, it would be selfish of us to keep Punish Props small and only do tutorial content with us two and mm -hmm. what we know. Uh, what we want eventually is for Punish Props just to exist as, you know, really good tutorial content where we bring in, you know, guests to do what they're like, to teach what they're specialized in. Mm -hmm. And running that out of the basement seemed like, it would be kind of not only dangerous but also just not a professional thing like when our friends would come visit our shop i'd be like uh to do to do a video with us like eric knows uh we were doing that plaster torso casting in our basement and it was just like it's like oh man how cool would it be to actually have like a real shop space to do this in instead yeah we just sort of talked about it a lot and more we talked about more and more and more until finally we just pulled the trigger yeah. there was no one defining moment it just kind of it was that thing that we knew we were eventually going to do, and we just kind of got around to it. And um, we, we chatting with Level 52 a lot helped as well, because right. they were excited about moving. We were excited about moving. Anytime we hung out, we talked about it, and we were basically like, well, why don't we just look at some spaces? And once we started looking, we were pretty pretty set. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, it's a trap has a question and also I see you gifting subs uh, in the in the chat there thanks for that uh, did you move anything that you expected to leave at your house uh, we we did run into the problem of uh, not having any tools at our house yes so, so we had to go to Harbor Freight and pick up scissors yeah tape uh, we <laughs> glue, did super <laughs> glue super glue we had no glue uh, yeah. Uh, so we, I didn't realize how many tools we took until they were all gone. So we kept a hammer. We already had a screwdriver upstairs. We just yeah. kept that. Um, a power drill. Yeah. Most of the uh, props that were on the walls in our house uh, we took. And uh, now on our walls we have all the art prints that we have artist friends who are awesomely talented. We've been buying some of their art prints over the years. We actually can put them up on the walls. We yeah. did that. Actually it looks like a normal kind of living space now. Um, but we did keep the Lego stuff at home, mm -hmm. so that's kind of the defining. I have a lot of um, toys, and that the and a lot of those stayed figurines. Home. Yeah, things. a lot of those stayed home. Yeah. Um, Mythuzella says, "What's what was the hardest piece of equipment to move out of the old shop and into the new one?" Um, I mean, the drill press was kind of a pain, but I made Dave and. And uh, Everett do that. So that wasn't difficult for me. It looked like me. it was hard. Bill <laughs> took a picture of them while they were moving it. So. Um, the This crazy industrial, the shelves and these yeah, desks were easily the hardest thing to move. They're just so heavy. They're just crazy heavy and unwieldy yeah. um, and unforgiving. They took a super dolly. We had to build a super dolly because we left our other dolly at home. <laughs> and there were, uh, after... Like we would, we would move the furniture around the the car carpeted office, and it's like, oh, this is so heavy. And then we're like in the store the next day, looking at and waiting in the checkout aisle, and they have those little coaster footies that are yeah. like helps you move furniture easier on carpet. And I'm like, oh, that would have been great. So like we didn't do any like research ahead of time on how to move this stuff. We just were like, I don't know, put it in the truck and move it. Uh, Mitzula says, have the neighbors figured out what you guys actually do other than play with RC cars? We haven't really chatted with the neighbors mm -hmm. uh, much yet. It seems like everyone is just here to do their work. So, but I'm sure over time we will make friends. Um, Hopefully not enemies. Yeah. Uh, so far everyone's, I mean, I've seen has been nice, but it does seem like everyone keeps themselves. And that's what we do at our, resi our, our we residential want. rental place, too. Yeah, we, we don't just, talk to our neighbors. Yeah. I mean, they, they probably think we're weird anyway. Probably. <laughs> uh, if you guys have any more questions questions I'll, I'll dive into just a couple more things we did after we moved into the shop and we'll grab a couple more questions and then we'll call it good uh one of the things we did was to get the locks redone here so the previous tenant locks were still on the front and rear door um so we hired a locksmith to do that and one of the things we did that i think is really cool is we got a number pad lock on the back door and that's how we get in and out we don't really use the front door the front door is unadorned um and locked with a lock with a flappy paddle so you can get out that mm -hmm. way but not back in mm -hmm. um because we don't we don't do retail we don't have clients or customers coming in the front door yeah we're actually getting some uh, uh our first couple weeks moving in we're getting some people walking into the office uh expecting it to be a business because there used to be another business yeah. here and so that was really awkward <laughs> so now it's just locked yeah so that's locked but it's legal because you can get out it's, the, it's yeah it's one of those on like way in. it's one of those push flappy paddles yeah. you see in like uh in malls yeah. and stuff yeah but then we have a keypad for the back door so it's all mm -hmm. yeah well you can picture the scenario of us being like in costume going outside for a photo shoot and we don't have our keys on us and then the door shuts behind us and yep. we're locked out of our shop shop in our costumes <laughs> then we have to make friends with the neighbors to Try and figure out how to get back in our in our uh, shop. It's a trap. Wants to know if potential future living places to move to uh, came into play. That was early on. That was a want for us. We wanted to live near my brother. Oh yeah, I'm glad you brought that yeah, up. Yeah, but over time we realized that um, the place where we ended up, there was just more to pick from yeah. there. Yeah, picture like uh, the game uh, Sim City. There's like residential and like industrial, and like you kind of keep them all separate. Right. And, like the area we wanted to go didn't really have the kind of spaces we needed mm -hmm. uh, had a lot of great residential stuff yeah. but like, so the, the place we found is about a 15 ish minute commute from our current house which is all we we were willing to move but anywhere that we moved would have cost more than we where we currently mm -hmm. live so we're like we'll just stay where we live now and commute and it'll be fine yeah uh three years from now who knows yeah the uh the areas we were hoping to get at original originally 
ten, it tends, it was like around Microsoft land, and right. they were all more office yeah. oriented, and so they weren't like industrial. They were like, you, you come here with your computer and your office, and you that's your business is like, you know, like software. Yeah. So, but the area we're in now is very industrial. Mm -hmm. um, Silent Warlock says, "Do you miss anything from the old shop?" Uh, I miss the old sink. I miss it's having a really shop sink. Really good shop sink. I miss the temperature down there in the summer. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple months in the summer where it's a little too warm in Seattle. So right now this office is pretty warm. Uh, and then we would just go down in the basement shop and it would be like 72 degrees and be like, Ooh. but in the winter it was the worst. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of balances out. But not much. Um, Corium9 says, uh, have you got the lighting for the video set up the way you wanted? Not yet. We have... A lot of big plans for the the shop space as far as setting up how we're gonna film everything and hopefully we'll start getting that ready in the next month or two yeah we're... I'll have more on that in the future we haven't really dove into it yet um, so right now everything's just kind of um, utilitarian everything's just kind of there so that we can continue to make videos uh, but we're gonna get ambitious with that yeah, more on that in the future yeah our last shop was like shop one right now this is shop 1.5 yeah shop 2.0 hasn't been put together yet yeah. so it will uh, be timber 84 is curious about the moisture in the shop um it's fine we have and that's why jeff's giggling jeff knows what we're talking about so he's giggling <laughs> in the chat um this the i mean seattle in general isn't very humid which is great so right now uh, like i have a little thermometer that and barometer so it's dry as far as humidity is concerned and the temperature is like 75 degrees in there which is like perfect it's definitely a concern depending on where you live yeah. um, i imagine uh like uh this space uh a previous tenant added a heater in the shop um and also an air conditioner kind of unit and i imagine if you're like in florida maybe the industrial spaces tend to have more of the humidity control uh by previous tenants, yeah, like already be. set up. So those are bonuses too you can stumble into that someone already upgraded. Uh, so, but yeah, for Seattle, it's it's usually fine, uh, humidity wise. Also, mm. it's not a leaky basement, so better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think that is just about it. Uh, we covered just about everything. I don't see any more questions, so I think we're gonna call it there. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Uh, once again, if you want to see more about the move, we've got a bunch of uh, move vlogs over on Patreon. Those are for patrons only to thank them for helping us uh, afford to move. Uh, and we're going to be doing that continuing every week. We'll have new behind the scenes videos over on Patreon, patreon.com slash punish props. Thank you for supporting us over there. And we thank you for choosing to support us. Uh, if you're jumping on right now. So keep being awesome. Thank you, uh, Prop Tarts, for hanging out with us. Yeah, thank you for all the helpful questions. Yep. Thank you, uh, Paige, for all the help over there. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's about it. We're, we got a whole bunch of other projects to work on the rest of today. So we're going to go jump on that. So, and next week we will be live streaming from the shop. Mm -hmm. That's happening. Mm -hmm. For sure. This recording will still go up on our Punish Props Extras yes. channel as yes, well as our RSS podcast feed. Mm -hmm. So this will still, if you just hopped in halfway through, this whole thing will be available later. In a couple days. Uh, yeah, so cool. Thanks, everybody, and we'll catch you in the next one. Awesome. Before you stop the stream, yeah. I want to go grab the vlog.